Okay, so what we've done so far is we've factored quadratic expressions, and we factored some that were technically not quadratics, uh, but once we took a GCF out, it was a quadratic. Well, we're talking about polynomials now, so we're actually going to look at how to factor some polynomials. So the reason why I had you multiply these two expressions um, is because factoring is the opposite of multiplication. Okay, so I had you multiply these out to see what the result is. So the first one, all four of these terms here in the middle cancel out, and we only end up with 8x cubed minus 64. We're going to look at, well, how do we go from this expression, this cube, to the factor form of it. Um, and then we're going to look at uh, this one. Nothing canceled, nothing combined. We ended up with four terms. The highest power was degree three. Uh, we haven't factored anything like that so far. So we're going to look at how to factor these today. How do we get from here to here? How do we go backwards with this? It's not as hard as it looks. Um, but we do have these two special cases. Uh, there's something I was going to say. Notice why nothing combines in this. This looks different than our typical binomial kind of binomial. Usually we're used to both our factors looking like 2x minus 7. We're not used to having a square on one of those. So that's what makes the difference in this problem versus the ones we've done so far. Okay, so we're going to look at how to factor these polynomials, how to go backwards. And remember, the whole purpose of factoring is so that we can solve these equations. When these become equations, when we stick an equal to on the end, we're actually looking for a value for x. So that's what the purpose of factoring is, is so that we can find out what x is. Okay? So we're going to start with what we call the sum and difference of perfect cubes. Okay, the sum and difference of perfect cubes. We've done the sum of, or the difference of perfect squares. Remember that was the one special case where we only had two terms. We had a minus sign in between, and the first and the last term were perfect squares. Well, similar case here. Um, we're only going to have two terms. This time, though, there can be a plus or a minus. It doesn't have to be a minus. It had to be a minus sign with the, with the perfect squares, with the perfect cubes. It can be a plus or a minus. Um, so here's how we factor them. Now, the steps look really lengthy, but it's just because I tried to write them all out for you. It's really not a big deal. But as always, your first step should be to look for a GCF. Do these two terms have anything in common? If they do, we've got to start with that. Then we can proceed uh, with our steps. We're going to set up two sets of parentheses. One is a binomial. It has two terms. So you see I have two blanks right here. The other one is a trinomial with three spaces in it. You're going to find the cube root of each term. So you're going to be using this poster here in the middle uh, to figure out perfect cubes. Uh, you're probably not going to get one that's off of this list or that's not on this list. Okay. Most of the time, the numbers are very reasonable. Uh, 216 is usually about as good as they get. Um, every once in a while, you might see a 243 or something like that. Okay, so you can use this to find the cube root. You can also find it on your calculator. Let me go ahead and show you where that button is, if you've never seen it before. Okay, the cube root under your math menu, which is below the green alpha button. Uh, the fourth option there has a three in front of a square root looking thing. Okay, that's your cube root button. So say your number was 81. Uh, well, 81 is not a perfect cube. That was a really bad example. Um, 27. Okay, cube root is 27. It'll tell you it's three. Or you can look at the poster. Three cubed is 27. So the cube root of 27 is three. All right, so let's keep moving. We're going to find the cube root, and you're going to put those two terms in the first set of parentheses. So the first cube root goes here. The second cube root goes in the second spot. Now we're going to fill in the second set of parentheses based on what we've got in the first set of parentheses. We're going to square the first term of the first set. That answer goes right here. Okay. Um, then we're going to square the second term. It goes in the last blank. Okay. And then in the middle, we multiply them together, and that goes in the second blank. And then I save this for last, 
we put our signs in there. Do not put any pluses and minuses in there until the very end. You're going to assign your signs using SOAP. Okay, that stands for same, opposite, and the last one is always positive. Okay, same, opposite, and the last one is always positive. So, there's a whole lot of explaining, a whole bunch of words, and you're probably thinking, you said this was easy, but I promise you it really is. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's look at 125 m cubed plus 1. We want to ask ourselves, is there a GCF? Do 125 and 1 have anything in common other than 1? Of course not, because 1 is one of our numbers. So, 125 is a perfect cube. It is 5 cubed. So, let's start with our process here. Okay, we need a binomial and a trinomial. Okay, small set of parentheses, big set of parentheses. The cube root of 125 is 5. The cube root of m cubed is m. So that goes in our first spot. The cube root of 1 is 1. Alright, now let's fill in our second set of parentheses. We are going to square 5m to get that first term. So 5 squared is 25. m squared is m squared. Bless you. In the last spot, we're going to square our 1. So 1 squared is 1. 1 to any power is still 1. And then for this middle one, I'm going to do it in a different color because so my lines don't start overlapping here. This middle one, we're going to multiply these two things together. 5m times 1 is going to go in the middle. Now in this case, multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. So that's 5m. And then here comes the soap, okay? The same sign that was in the original problem, so it was a plus, so we put a plus there. The opposite of that, minus, and the last one is always positive. Okay? Same sign that was in the original problem, the opposite sign, and then the last one is always positive. Now, you're probably thinking, well, I just took two terms and expanded it into five terms. How have I done myself any good? Well, if you look at it, this first binomial is very easy. If we were trying to solve this, this is just a linear equation. All we have to do is set that equal to zero, subtract one, divide by five, we've got an answer of negative one fifth. Now this, a lot of times these will look like perfect square trinomials. They really will because the first and the last are perfect squares, but that middle term is not uh, two times uh, the first times the last, okay? Um, so they look like they can be factored, but I promise you they cannot be factored. When we get to solving these things, we'll have to use the quadratic formula on this part. But now we go out from something that we couldn't find the answer to. We can't solve this for m. Well, I mean, we can, but we're only going to get one answer. But it's a cube. There's supposed to be three answers. So this is where the other two answers are going to come from. Okay. Now, that's not significant to the factoring, but I'm just explaining to you why we took something that was two terms, and made it this big, okay, because it actually helps us find the answer. Okay, let's look at number, or letter B, okay, 8 plus 27 m cubed. Again, I want to ask, do they have anything in common? 8 and 27 are not divisible by uh, the same number. Uh, 8 and 27 are on my list of perfect cubes over here, so I'm good, okay. I'm going to leave it in that order. Now, with the plus, it really doesn't matter. Uh, if there was a minus, it would be even more important that I leave it in that order so that I didn't make any mistakes with my signs. But I'm going to leave it in, in the order that the problem has it written. I'm not going to change it to standard form, just so that I don't have to worry about messing up any signs. Okay, cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 cubed is 8. The cube root of 27 is 3, 3 cubed is 27, and the cube root of m cubed is m. Okay, first blank, we square our first term. 2 squared is 4. Last blank, we square our second term. Make sure you square both the number and the variable. So 3 squared is 9, m squared is m squared. In the middle, we multiply them together. 
2 times 3m gives us 6m there for our middle term. So we started with a positive, so it's positive, negative, positive. Same, opposite, always positive. Okay, now C is one that people tend to overlook because they're like m cubed plus 1. We, we tend to forget that 1 is a perfect everything. It's a perfect square, it's a perfect cube, it's a perfect fourth. 1 to any power is still 1. So this is the sum of perfect cubes. Okay, we've got m and we've got 1. Square the m, so that's m squared. Square the 1, that's 1. Multiply them together, 1 times m is m. If you want to write 1m, that's fine. You just, you really don't have to write a coefficient of 1. Assign our signs, same, positive, opposite, negative, last, always positive. So it's really not bad, right? <clears throat> okay, let's look at D. 256x cubed plus 108. Well, when I glance at my list, I do not see 256 and 108. That's because there is a GCF. So let's find out what it is. Um, let's try, I don't know, let's try 3, nope, 4. 4 gives us 64. Let's see what it gives us when we divide 108 by that. 64 and 27 are perfect cubes, and they don't have anything else in common. So we need to start by factoring out a 4. So I'm going to do that before I set up my parentheses. Okay, I'm going to just take out a GCF. This is regular GCF factoring at this step. Take out the 4. I'm left with 64x cubed plus 27. Now, in my parentheses, I have the sum of perfect cubes. So, I have to bring down my GCF. Don't just drop that 4. Okay, you have to bring it down. Set up your binomial and your trinomial. The cube root is 64, 4, 4 cubed is 64, Let me make sure there, x, 3 cubed is 27, okay, 4 squared is 16, x squared, 3 squared is 9, multiply them together, 3 times 4x is 12x. Same, opposite, always positive. Ooh, excuse me. Okay, one more. 4x cubed plus 4. GCF of 4 again. So take out the 4. When we do, we're left with x cubed plus 1. Don't forget, you got to put that plus 1 there. It's not just x cubed. 4 divided by 4 is 1, not 0. You've got to put a 1 there in its place or you, you don't preserve the original problem. So we just did this a second ago. It just had m's instead of x's. Okay, so we've got x and 1. Square the x, square the 1, multiply them together. Now, I really don't have a good reason for why I do the first, the last, and then the middle other than the fact that that was how I was taught. I think it's easy to keep things straight, but you square, square, and then multiply together. Um, all right, that's just kind of the way that I go about it. If you would rather fill it in left to right, that's fine. Um, just so you know what you're doing. Okay, just so you know what you're doing there. All right, so let's practice it.